Hi there. Welcome. Smile. That's going to be a good one. So thank you for tuning in. This video is going to be a bit different for both you and, and me. I'm trying to make this video in a format that kind of simulates a live stream, which was my initial idea with uh, this video, but I'm not sure that I'm quite ready to uh, to make a live stream yet. So we'll see how, how this goes and let me know what you think. Be honest, but kind if you think I did okay, or if there's things that you think that I should practice on before I commit to doing a, a live stream here on YouTube. But anyways, as you may have seen on the uh, title or the thumbnail here, this is going to be a Q&A video for the picture styles that I've released so far. First of all, it's awesome to see what you guys are doing with these picture styles. I want to thank everyone that posts pictures on Instagram using the hashtag filmiccanon. I try to swing by and look at the hashtag at least once or twice a week and, and just check out you know what you guys are doing because there's pictures from from different parts of the world and people shooting very very different things than than what i have access to shoot where i live so just seeing all of that on that uh, hashtag is uh, is very very inspiring so thank you very much and if you didn't know about the <laughs> filmic canon hashtag now you do so yeah use it okay now let's get on with the questions and i will do my best not to stare down on my screen i just did it again anyway uh, juan sanchez writing he's been very in, invested in the picture styles thank you very much juan and he's wondering over the overall thought process and how i came to to create these picture styles which is i think a very good question to start off this video with so i believe there's a couple of different events in my it feels wrong to call it a career as a photographer or a videographer uh, but let's for for the sake of simplicity and one of the first little events or things that happened that made me realize uh, something was when I got an external monitor for my uh, for my Canon camera this one here and all of a sudden I was able to use creative looks and and lots on that monitor which kind of changed how uh, the world looked I, I guess the term is uh, heightened reality or when you take the reality and just make it a little bit better and a little bit uh, nicer looking to some degree and that had a huge effect on both my work the quality i think got better and it also had a huge impact on my creativity because all of a sudden the boring everyday things the street signs the bus stop things that you go past every day well all of a sudden with that filter <laughs> if you may uh, the 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 street sign all of a sudden have a slightly different hue uh, the bus stop looks a bit more cinematic and the the old building looks um, a, a bit different too so it, it helped me to kind of rediscover and get more inspired with a lot of things even in in environments that i was very very used to so that's one of the uh, the major things that i think played a big role in and the next point which was when i decided to get a fujifilm camera and some of you may know that fujifilm cameras have these film simulations which wasn't Oddly enough, one of the main reasons why I, I got the Fujifilm camera, but I soon discovered how much fun I was having. And I got the same kind of experience shifting around and using different uh, film simulations on the Fujifilm camera. The same reason there, uh, mundane everyday objects all of a sudden got a slightly new life. And there's also the, the, the fact that 
when you're out doing street photography, for example, uh, you can have film simulations that kind of caters to, to that look, to that makes uh, certain things like bikes or people look uh, cooler or, or uh, I mean, more interesting uh, visually or color-wise. And that kind of inspires you to, to look for more subjects to take pictures of, which is a good thing, right? So it, it kind of, uh, it's kind of snowballs when you use these, uh, this picture style. So obviously if you go out hiking in the forest, you might want to use a different film simulation for those kind of greens or, or what have you. But being able to have all those kind of creative crutches in your, uh, in your camera, instead of just relying on Canon colors, vivid portrait landscape, which, I mean, there's some differences between the different uh, native picture styles on the Canon cameras, but they're no way near the, uh, the difference between Provia, Astia and Pro Neg High or any of those um, film simulations that you have on Fujifilm cameras. And even if I, I love shooting the, with a Fujifilm camera, this camera here, the SL2 or the uh, 200D, uh, is still <laughs> the camera that I use the, the most because this is the camera that I pretty much always bring with me in my in my bag. It's 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 with me uh, almost everywhere. So I still want to be able to have that some of that heightened reality, some of that extra sauce in in that Canon camera. So that's probably uh, a long answer, but I hope <laughs> I hope it covers uh, some of the history and the reasons why I decided to play around with these picture styles just so I can have a bit more fun and kind of, you know, add that extra sauce that you normally do in your editing straight in camera and just, you know, get you a bit more amped up when you see things out shooting. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, Stefan Dimuzio is wondering about the same kind of thing here. What inspired me to create these picture styles? Same thing to you. Great question, Stefan. And he's also wondering about references for for the picture styles. So, if uh, what kind of photos, videos, films, etc. that I use when it comes to to reference images, that it comes from from a lot of sources. Uh, sometimes just looking at. Uh, Instagram hashtags can be very helpful. I've, I've used Instagram uh, quite a lot when I've been working with the uh, Krodak picture style and also the Portra picture style. Uh, and I might circle back to those <clears throat> later on. But there's also a ton of, of pictures that I take myself just to, to get uh, the right type of, of images that I need to kind of uh, push different colors in, in certain directions. Uh, so I do uh, most of the, uh, the the base shots myself, but I'll, I'll, I'll <sighs> slow down. I'll obviously uh, take a lot of inspiration from, from different photographers and, and movies and, and that kind of stuff. And, one of a great example might be uh, the California Cowboy picture style pack that I released almost a year ago now, maybe. And that was inspired by a photographer slash videographer uh, named Kem Mackey, who is, well, I think he's back in California now. I think he moved to Texas and now he's back in California again. Uh, anyway, he had... Um, a massive impact on me both as a creator but also stylistically coming to terms with uh, my personality and and kind of be more confident in showing the things that i think is is you know looks good instead of trying to emulate uh, peter mckinnon or other fantastic photographers out there which necessarily wasn't my style but it's kind of become the norm, especially on, on Instagram and, uh, and YouTube, where you need 
or, or want to have a certain look because it's it's kind of the norm. So Kamaki did a lot of things differently. He shoots a lot of fashion, a lot of cowboy stuff, uh, a lot of shoots out in the uh, desert, and he uses uh, a lot of country music in his video instead of electronic dance music. And I grew up listening to, to country music and I played country music and bluegrass. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons why I ended up here in, in Malmo because of that uh, my music career uh, or whatever you want to call it which was very very influenced with uh, Amer Americana and <laughs> folk music and bluegrass country music and that kind of uh, stuff so seeing other creators out there that did similar things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the guts to do, uh, had a very uh, positive effect on me. So California Cowboy is kind of a little tribute to myself, but also to Cameron Mackey for just, you know, unlocking some of that uh, confidence in me. And obviously I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, that kind of filmic nostalgic style. That's my style as well. And I, I try my best to develop my version of it, even if it takes time. How do you field test your picture styles? What do you look for? Yeah, that's another great question. So field testing can take a lot of time and create a lot of frustration. So you do these kind of rough beta versions of these uh, picture styles and then you go out and usually I have two, three versions at the same time, which I don't recommend on the camera. So field testing, taking pictures of blue skies, clouds, grass, greenery, and um, red for some reason is quite tricky to, to get to work uh, in a nice way. With these pictures out, so there's often issues with uh, banding and parts of a subject that kind of uh, breaks up and get pixelated or they get some weird artifacts. So that takes a lot of, of tweaking. So yeah. Okay. So the next question here, I have to zoom in because I was doing this in a hurry and uh, I don't want to... Well, anyway, uh, GC Del Rosario. Thank you, first of all, for uh, supplying a question or sub submitting a question. Okay, so this is another uh, great question here from uh, Rosario. Uh, do you turn on lens aberration correction when using your custom picture profiles? So things like peripheral illumination and uh, diffraction and, and uh, yeah, different types of in-camera uh, corrections. And the short and simple answer is that I don't turn any of these off. Um, and the reason for that is that I think uh, most people statistically have these default settings on in their cameras. So it would be more of a moving target if I had some of these uh, turned off and some on. Uh, so I d decided to to kind of have this as a standard. So every reference picture that I take, every um, every finished picture that you see here on this channel, shot with yeah, unless it's shot with a with a vintage lens, it's gonna have all those uh, in camera corrections on. So I'm kind of leaving that portion up to you as a photographer or videographer if you want to turn on or off some of those uh, in-camera corrections. So that's yeah, up to you. I hope that answers the question. Did I answer? I mean, I get so nervous when I'm sitting here uh, because I want this video to be very smooth and at the same time entertaining. Uh, without me doing any uh, any edits in, in post to this. So uh, <laughs> let me know how, how you think I did. But that's I think that's going to be the last question that we answer today. So please leave uh, more questions in the comment section of this one. And uh, let me know what you think about the uh, the performance here if you think I'm ready to make a, a live stream soon here. Oh, and before I let you go, there's one more thing that if you have the time, I would like you to drop a comment in the comment section about what camera 
you're using to uh, to shoot with these uh, custom picture styles, because I'm hoping that I can compile a list that I can put on my website or somewhere where people can go and check if uh, if these picture styles work with their uh, specific camera models. I try to answer these questions that I often get in the comment section. I do my best to keep everything in my head, but it would be nice, I think, for everyone to just have a, a fairly uh, accurate list of uh, all the supported camera models. So if you could do me that solid fa <laughs> favor, I'd be very, very grateful. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching again. Yeah. <laughs> wow.